Welcome back figurine collectors and I present to you one of the grail figures of the year, potentially the best figure of 2024, this is the Alter Arcanite Schwartz Elite 2 figure, I'm going to go through the details of this figure, I'm going to see what makes this figure so cool, okay I wanted to make that joke, and I'm going to go through some important things like why surface shipping can save you money and why I tend to use it for these big figurines which come in their big boxes. And it's not just about the money as Amir says, there's also some other issues with this figurine. Like does it fit in your detox? We're going to have those questions answered. Why does this figurine need screws? Hmm, it's very interesting. And does it support itself? Those questions are going to be answered in just a moment. This is an amazing figurine. This is one of the top grail figures of the year. This is Schwartz by Alter and we're going to go into why this is a figure masterpiece and potentially the best figure of the year. So let's get straight into it. So first up, I've got to explain myself. Why did I spend 50,000 yen to buy her and why did I choose this figurine in particular? So this is my Ark Knights account. And as you can see, I have Schwartz in my character set. So that was a good enough reason. I used to play Ark Knights during the COVID period. Unfortunately, I don't play it so much these days just because I don't have much time. Uh, this is the splash art of her figurine. And as you can see, I saw this on Ami Ami. I was scrolling for a long time. Like as you just scrolling, looking at this figurine for many months, and I knew this is going to be great. It's by Alter. It's a good figurine company. It is expensive. Like it's so expensive. But after looking at it for so long, and it's so gorgeous, so visually stunning, and it's so unique, I decided to just go for it. I smashed that add to cart button, and then here I am. I'm like one kidney less, and I have this figurine. So I think it's okay, and it's all worth it. Okay then, so why do I think she is a figure masterpiece? Why do I think this tall, elegant cat girl is potentially figure of the year 2024? Is it because of her face, like her gorgeous face with those cat ears? Is it because of those eyes that are staring down at you that melts any Arknight fan's heart? No, it's because she's actually packing with technical details on the figurine. Like on a serious note, she has a lot of detailing. You can just see here from all the macro shots, like just look at this gun over here. You can see the dial and the groovings on it. Also on this weapons here with the arrows, they actually got the grooves on the arrows and them use metallic paints. You can also see the arrow fletchings and the scope here. It's got beautiful paint work. There's a lot of good detailing. Just have a look at it. Like you can see the bolts on the scope. And also I love this part, like they got the decal, the siesta naming on her gun, well gun crossbow, and you can see each letter quite clearly, like it's all a lot of attention to detail including this mini crossbow and I gotta talk about the accessories here, like her accessories have a lot of detail, just look at this bag, it's not overlooked, it's got like group, it's got like this mesh, it's got these links on the chains. And these base accessories, my god, they look gorgeous. Look at this suitcase and the paint and the shading they use on the locks. Or this floating paper sheet. Just look at the floating paper sheet. I mean, like, it's got the words on it. It looks like it's about to fly off. It's very dynamic. And I love the character design. They paid a lot of attention to detail on how she looks on the splash art. She's got her originum, originium, so markings on her leg, you know, part of the law. She's got her earpiece for her Neko ears. You can see here there's a lot of detailing on the earpiece. You can't even see it sometimes, like if you depending on the angle, but they add the detail there. Just for you to know. And she's got a cattail. I mean she is a feline. I love it. Like and it matches very well with these floating rocks as well that goes around her. And you can see that there's just it's crisp. Like it's crisply done. Like it just works. Like it's floating. It doesn't look like it's you know using any support stand to make it float but actually it does have one it's just very well hidden and of course the face is gorgeous like you just see also the color gradient is spectacular like it's you can the color gradient is just used everywhere look at her clothes here and it extends all the way through her figure like it goes through her translucent hood and also down to her hair as well we're going to look at her hair in a bit but yeah you can just admire the color gradient there's no more than one shade of color used everywhere stunning it's absolutely gorgeous you see now we can see more of the hair floating around like this one shades of gray moving on to a light shade of lavender like this thing you know but it's great and also the the sort of uh translucent feel of it i don't know it just adds this really high quality effect to it. it's like 
It's one of those figures that you can stare on the outside and admire it for a long time, very slowly. But then looking deeper in, you can see even more detail and admire it even more. It's a very fun figure to own. I love it. I definitely think it's a masterpiece. It's full of this dynamic feel for the figurine. It feels like she's floating. It doesn't, it definitely feel like she's about to take off and jump into the air at any given point. This is an S tier figure. I'm not gonna put it down as potentially the best figure of 2024, at least for me, because well, this figure is very expensive to buy after all. Okay then, so I'm onto more practical questions. And the first question I think most people are gonna be thinking, can she fit in the DTOF? And the answer is no. Unfortunately, she is just too tall to fit in the DTOF, which is going to be maybe a deal breaker for some people uh, because I know people want to protect their figurines in the DTOF shelf, but this is just way too big. Like, And I'll give you the exact measurements of her height later on. So I did think about whether to use these uh, DTOF adjustable shelves that I bought on Amazon. And basically, you can just add more shelves and adjust them into your DTOF to maximize the space and you've got these individual hooks to hook them on but I thought it was a bit too risky to do at the moment without careful planning so I just went around the house looking for good places to put it and I'll just show you where I tried to put her and after searching around the house one of the coolest places to put her was actually in the fridge she will fit in there and who really needs to eat anyways when you're figurine collecting Okay, jokes aside, I did manage to find a place for Schwartz and it's not in the fridge. It's actually in somewhere safe. But before that, I'm going to give you a mini room tour. And this is what a figurine collector of two years looks like. If you want to see any of the figurines in more detail, please check out my video of 19 scale figures that I did earlier in the year. But for now, feel free to take a look at my room. Okay, then I want to talk about shipping because a lot of people have asked me about how I ship my figurine and I'm going to tell you that for big figurines, I tend to use surface shipping. Why? Because it just saves money. Like shipping is expensive for these big boxes and this figure costs us already 46,000 yen. The shipping costs of 4,000 yen. You don't want to know how much it costs to ship this by DHL. It is a very big number. And even when it comes to your country, you may need to pay taxes. So in the UK, I had to pay an admin fee and then the VAT tax is already 62 pounds for this figurine but it downside it does take time it took nearly four months to ship it here and one thing to know about surface shipping you do net notifications up until the point where it leaves the country of japan in which case you get nearly like three months three and a half months of silence before you actually get some notification of when it actually arrives in your country big anxiety for a lot of people it may not be for everyone but for me it saves money so i will keep doing it right so why does amia look worried what problems does she have well the thing is even though this is a figure masterpiece they do have some problems now, for example here like you've got some screws to attach the base onto the actual figurine so i actually thought this would be quite a sturdy figurine so you know it's got screws so what else could go wrong the actual fact is like this figure is being very tall it wobbles a lot like despite the fact that being like almost 42 centimeters in high it doesn't actually have a lot of support to stop it from wobbling around as you can see here it just wobbles a lot which is kind of just worrying because like, it makes me feel like it's very fragile like super fragile and as a result i am just scared to touch it or and also scared to move home now i mean how am i going to move this figure if i move out of this place i just don't know and also be careful the pointy parts they're very sharp but i love the detail like this is just nice touch it's good that the weapons actually hurt you uh, the, but the main point is that I'm actually a little bit worried about this point here. A lot of the figure's weight is just put onto this stress point. I know if she has a support rod on her right, but it's still kind of just worrying me. And I think it's the downside of the design, but it's also the strong point as well. The fact that she has this dynamic feel of leaning from one side to the other, which makes it look so visually stunning. It does give me some sense that it might 
lean a bit more in the future. Another problem I had was that I couldn't assemble it to match the actual manual. And what I mean is like there's this little gap here between the trigger point and the actual base of that little clip there. I just couldn't push it all the way through and if I felt like if I push it any further with any more force it's actually just going to snap the figurine so it does annoy me a little bit. It's a minor detail, no one really spots it unless you use the macro lens like I do. I don't like this string across her head but I think you only see that when you look at a certain angle. It just covers her face a little bit. It is a very nitpick point though to be honest. Um, the other nitpick I have is that there's a little paint spot on her coat which I spotted. Again it's tiny, I don't really notice it. But none of these problems actually put me off the figurine. She is still a masterpiece. Okay, figurine collectors, I know I've used a lot of strong wording here calling her a masterpiece, calling her the best figurine of the year. But that's generally what I feel like. I mean, I feel like this is a gross strong contender. I know Arknights have released some really good figures, including this one, which is really expensive as well. Jesus. But still, this. This figure has all the right pieces, all the right detailing, all the right quality. I'm going to put her out there as contender for best figure of 2024. It's definitely my best figurine for 2024 pre-ordered. Now I'm still waiting for a Frost Nova scale figure. I don't know if anyone heard anything about it, but I think it's going to be hotter than the chilies that she eats. I have her Nendoroid coming and it's being shipped by Air Parcel. I didn't need to use Surface this time because it's tiny. Anyways. Thanks for watching and have fun collecting. I'm going to leave you with some B-roll of the remaining footage I have of Schwartz. Because I know some figurine collectors like to see more of the details.